God kind of grabbed us. And I think it was maybe through you. So I was going to say maybe footnote Aaron here. I'm not sure. But someone felt like God was saying directly to us and kind of almost put a halt on the whole thing and said, you are called 24-7 prayer. Live up to your name or change it. And it was a real direct, it was, wasn't it? It was like, it was like, it really, actually, it really kind of cut us and just stopped us. I, I felt like, that's how, do you remember it that way too, Aaron? It really just like, I even think we canceled some things and just were like, okay, we need to. And I think, um, you know, stuff happens when you pray. That's, that's, that's just the way God is, right? That's the whole whole story of Acts, people all together in one place, praying, and there's community, they share stuff together, and then mission flows out of that, that's all good, that's God's plan, but as soon as we begin to lose focus, or put some of those things before that, it's almost like you're, you're standing out on a, on, a, on a ledge, you know, things get a little shaky, and I wonder, in our image of this stream eroding, if God wants to kind of knock over those things and dump us back into the stream and say, We're, I want to rejuvenate your call to prayer. Your call to a lifestyle of prayer. Let's look at a section of scripture together. One to five. Everyone knows this is the, the vine and the branches um, scripture. It's in a translation that's for those of us who cheat and attempted to learn Greek and failed miserably. In my defense, I tried to do it by correspondence, which is just something you should never do. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it was a bad idea. But this is a guy, if you care, you want to look it up, this is a guy named uh, Kenneth Woist. Some of you may have heard of it. And it's a, it's a bit of a, a cumbersome translation, but essentially it tries to um, put all of the words of the original Greek, the, me the meanings of all the original words, into the sentences. And I love it. It's really good. Aaron, you can feel free to use this on, uh, on Sunday if you need with the okay. Greek scholar. <laughs> so let's, let's, have a, let's, have a, uh, let's have a look. Now before I do this, I have a note, I have a highlighted note here to just make sure that you know this. Because sometimes when you're, when you're the person up here challenging us all to, to um, kind of come back to the first thing and engage prayer in a meaningful way and let that prayer kind of overflow and erode the banks in your life, you get the impression that I'm like Spurgeon, kind of, you know, cloistered away, praying nonstop, and that I'm like all of these great heroes of the faith. I just want you to know I am the most unself-disciplined person that I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm terrible at it. I'm horrible at it. In fact, so many of us in 24-7 are horrible at it that we come up with like actual tools to try and help us to remember because we're so thick. How many of you guys, if we were here at noon tomorrow, your cell phones would go off? Anyone? No one? If you do that, you, the, you, the Europe guys, if I'm in the UK, everyone's cell phone goes off at noon. And everyone's cell phone goes off at noon because they all say, oh, geez, right, i got to remember. Okay, I want to, we're gonna, we all pray the Lord's Prayer at noon. Oh, it's not because there's some sort of ritual that if we forget, God's going to strike us dead. It's that we're all so thick that we just forget, right? Don't you find that actually most of your walk with Jesus, or a lot of your walk with Jesus, is remembering? <laughs> you know? Like, so you're just like, oh, I'm such an idiot, you know? How many of those times when, you, when you're when you talking with someone in the grocery line, and then you walk out, and you sit in your car, and you're like, shoot, I'm such an idiot. Why didn't I, like, even offer to help them, let alone offer to pray for them, or do, you know, like, what am I thinking? So I am not good at this, and that's one of the reasons that I want, I want that we wanted to tackle this topic tonight, because I feel like a lot of the times, it's easier for us to move on to mission or to move on to justice because we're, we suck at, at these things, but it's really exciting to kind of get out and do stuff. But our own personal engagement with the Father is sometimes just in that zone of I just lack any sort of self-discipline to get there. And we kind of do fits and starts. If you're like me, you do really well. And then you kind of peter off. But I think there's some things that we need to learn about that. It's just so that we don't get back into this works mentality of, 
checking off days on your calendar that you remember to get up at 5 a.m. Um, I think there's some things that we need to do. And this, this section in John helps us engage that. So let's look at it together, okay? So I, in con this is Jesus, remember? He's, he's, I l love John. John is my favorite book in the Bible. And this is leading into what people call the high priestly prayer of John in, in uh, 17, is it, and 18, right into the, the crucifixion and everything. And this is like, this is gold. This is gold, Jerry. Like between, you know, 13, 14, and the end, it's just, it's all red. If you have a red letter Bible, it's like solid red through all of those chapters. And... You know that part where John writes right at the end, Jesus did so many other things, and then, you know, to fill all these books, and you're like, John, like, just have a stab at it. Write us a few more. Like, this is, this is, a, this is, the, this is the, the, that whole kind of Jesus unloading everything he's got right before he goes to the cross. I love it. I love it. And it's also, it's, it's, it's straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. It's not like, you know, I love Paul, but, but this is Jesus just saying, here's how it is, my friends. Here's how it is. So I love this section. So he's, he's gearing up for the, the, the crucifixion, the, the, um, and he's going to tell them everything he's got. And he says this, I, in contradistinction to anyone else, anyone ever used the word contradistinction? <laughs> <laughs> Throw that in next. To, I want to hear contradistinction at least twice tomorrow. Okay? What a great word, though. Just so you know, I, Jesus, unlike anyone else you have ever met in your entire life, am the vine, the real vine, the genuine vine. <laughs> and my father is the tiller of the soil. Every branch in me not bearing fruit, he takes away. And every branch bearing fruit, he cleanses in order that it may keep bearing more fruit. As for you, already you are cleansed ones because of the word which I have spoken to you. Hold on just a second. I, I, um, I always have wanted to make a shirt that just says, fruit happens on the back. <laughs> a couple pears and an apple or something like that. We just moved from Niagara on the Lake, which is, which is wine country. Catherine uh, worked in a winery, and she would get the opportunity to go out to the vines and see what they were doing. And they would do exactly that. In fact, they would do really cool things like, like they would prune away the leaves so that the afternoon sun would get on the grapes. Because that was the sun that was the warmest and would, would do a bunch of stuff. You can ask Catherine afterwards. And then sometimes, though, they wanted it to shield the grapes. So then they would, they would allow the low-hanging leaves to, to stay down and, and not other ones. Sometimes you'd see them being just totally overgrown. And then other times just, just a stalk kind of coming right up with the fruit hanging off of it. So you could do all of those things and it would create more fruit, but it wouldn't create fruit. Fruit just happens. <laughs> right? Fruit just happens. A lot of the time I'm worried, I don't know about you guys, but I'm worried just as I mentioned a second ago about the mission in my life and the justice in my life and the things like that. And I worry about those things. And sometimes I think we've got to come up with new justice ideas or new mission ideas. And you know what? The thing is, fruit just happens. If you're with Jesus, if you're in the vine, fruit just happens. You don't have to come up with it. It just happens. And it's the best kind of fruit for your vine. In all of my years, I grew up on an, on an apple orchard. And in all of my years, I never saw a grape come from an apple tree. <laughs> I never saw a pear come from an apple tree. In fact, I didn't even see one kind of apple come from another kind of apple tree. Fruit just happens. When you get in the vine, it just happens. See, sometimes, do you ever have people that you, you hear these grand stories about what they're doing and you think, Man, what, I just I want to be a part of that. You know, Kelly's off in Mexico, and Aaron's in the downtown east side, and he's just he's just doing stuff, and it's amazing, and he's praying prayers, and addicts are coming to the Lord, and some of them are not, and some of them are, and and I I want to be there. Well, he's abiding in the vine, and the fruit is just happening. 